Lads and lasses, how are we doing? Welcome back to another video. And I just wanted to update you on where I think this channel is going to go. So, I've been having a think, and I think I'm going to go in the direction of football. It's what I know, it's what I love, and that's the direction I'm going to go. So, starting today, I'm going to go for a Premier League predictions, go through the games, what I think is going to happen, and yeah, I hope you enjoy, and I hope you support this channel and the way it's going to go. So yeah, let's get into it. So first up, we've got arguably the biggest game of the weekend. We've got Tottenham at home to Liverpool. I say at home, they're still at Wembley because the stadium's still not finished. But anyway, now a Liverpool side of old, one not managed by Jurgen Klopp and not boasting the signings of Van Dijk and Alisson, would lose here. A draw at best. But this Liverpool side have got something different about them. They could genuinely go on and win the league. And now I'm sure we've all watched the All or Nothing Man City documentary and it's hard not to be impressed by that and how Pep Guardiola has gone about his business, but this Man City side, can they keep it up? Who knows? If Liverpool, are, they're not going to get a better chance than this. This season is a fantastic chance for them to actually go and win the Premier League, something they failed to do in 20-odd years, ever since the first inception of the Premier League in 1992-93 season. So, personally, I think Liverpool might do it. I think they'll sneak a 2-1 win. Harry Kane's not been firing on all cylinders, as we've seen with England. Uh, Lloris is injured. I'm not sure whether that's to do with a drink driving incident or what, but he's supposedly injured. Tottenham have got a few other injuries as well. I'm not sure if Son's back from international duty, but yeah, it'll be a difficult one, this one. I'm going for a draw or a Liverpool win, but if I had to plumb for one, I'll go for Liverpool win 2-1. They just look a completely different side under Klopp. Milner, who everyone joked about was boring James Milner, he's turned to an absolute world beater. It's a shame that he's really retired from internationals. It'd be good if we could get him, Southgate could get him out and... Uh, back on the field like scores did a few times for Man United but yeah that side looks fantastic with Cater and that front three is arguably the best in the world now Ronaldo's gone to Juventus so they're going to be difficult to stop this season they were missing two things like in the previous seasons a centre back and a goalkeeper Klopp's now sorted those two problems eventually after Carriers's incident in the Champions League final so I think they can genuinely go all the way this season it's definitely going to be a two horse race Man City or Liverpool are going to win the league 100% Man United are nowhere near Chelsea are going to go through a bit of a transitional period under Sarri and Arsenal are, well what are Arsenal doing who knows moving on we've then got Bournemouth against Leicester now I'm a Sheffield United fan you probably don't know that but yeah and how David Brooks has started for Bournemouth and how he's done for Wales as well has been astonishing. It's been good to see. They're obviously all gutted when he left, but we got a fantastic fee, 10, 11 million for someone that weren't necessarily starting every week. It, it does make you wonder why, but as he's done so well, but yeah, he's done fantastic. So I'll just start off on that one. But as for a prediction, I'm going to go for Leicester, probably a Leicester win. A draw or a Leicester win here, yeah? so another away, another away win. They just, they just look good again. They're a fantastic side. Now, Mahrez has gone, and Vardy's in his twilight years. He's just retired from international football. But Leicester are a stronger side. It's just Bournemouth are good at home. They're generally good at home. It's a really tight pitch. The stadium only holds about 11,000 people. Uh, so, yeah, I do think that Leicester will probably nick this one. I'm probably going to go for a 2-0 win. Uh, I just think they're a stronger side, stronger defensively. Bournemouth tend to leak goals, although they have been impressive so far. The performance at West Ham especially. So, so I'm going to go for a Leicester win, 2-1 again. Following that, we've got Huddersfield at home against Crystal Palace. Now, it's too early to be saying it's a relegation six point, not relegation six point for Palace, but for Huddersfield it is. It's an absolutely, it's, it's an essential really. I can't see past Huddersfield going down this year. They've not really improved the squad. David Wagner's not really spent any money and now he did fantastically well last season. Arguably the manager of the year. Obviously we had Guardiola and Sean Dyche who did fantastically as well. But he did a superb job really at Huddersfield. So I think this year is going to be one step too far. And as long as the half plays, because he's, he's very, very key to where the Palace win, then I can't see past the Palace win. So I'm going to go for 2 0, Palace to win. Huddersfield are struggling for goals. They're struggling all over the pitch really. They got demolished when they tried to play football with Man City the other week, as many teams do. So I'm going to go for a Palace win, 2-0. It's a hard score at least one. And someone else will chip in from midfield. Talking of Man City, they tomorrow are at home against Fulham. Now, this is a potential coupon buster. Fulham have looked okay so far. They've not looked great. And fair enough, the odds are that Man City are going to win and win comfortably. But 
don't count Fulham out. They've spent 80, 100 million this year on really good players, such as Seri in central midfield. So, yes, I think Man City will win, and I think they'll win comfortably, but I don't think it will be 5, 6, 7, or whatever. This, it's not going to be 6 1. They're not going to beat Huddersfield 6 1. They're not going to beat Fulham 6 1, as they did with Huddersfield. If Saying that, if Fulham go and try and play football, as is their brand, then we could quite comfortably see another hammering. But I think the manager, Jukanovic, will be smarter than that. Um, having seen what Man City did to Huddersfield, absolutely took them apart. So I'm going to go for a Manchester City win. 3-1. I think Fulham will score. We'll get on the score sheet. Mitrovic has done really well so far. He's had a fantastic start. I think he scored in the international break as well. But don't quote me on that. So... Yeah, I'm going for 3-1, Man City to win. Next up, we've got the worst side to watch in the Premier League by far. Newcastle United at home to Arsenal. Now, this is nothing against Newcastle United. I, they're a fantastic club, arguably my favourite in the Premier League. The fans deserve so much more. Mike Ashley's ruined that club completely. I hope they can get back to where they were before. They've got a fantastic fan base, 50-odd thousand, and they're struggling at the bottom of the league, playing the most defensive football I've ever seen, but... But Inter has not really got any options. It, that, that's how he has to play. They've brought a few in. The uh, goalkeeper, Dubravka and Kennedy. In an attacking midfield, uh, winger sort of role. But they're extremely light again. And I'd probably give Benitez manager of the year if he manages to keep them up again. Because what they've got as a squad is a relegation squad. Like, there's no beating around the bush with that. That squad will get relegated under 99% of managers. It just so happens they've got a Champions League calibre manager in the ranks that will perhaps perform another miracle and keep them up. Any other manager, if Mike Ashley sacks him, then Newcastle are down to the championship and he's going to lose so much more money than he would already. So, But as for tomorrow's game, Newcastle have got a chance here. If they play defensively, as they have been doing, as the only way they seem to know how to under Benitez, then it's going to be a draw or a tight win. There aren't going to be too many goals. There's going to... Be, 2-1 or a 1-1 or a is what I would see this one going. I think Newcastle will concede. It's difficult to defend against any side, never mind uh, a decent Arsenal side for that long. Uh, but they've, they've looked okay. They've scored the odd goal. They scored against uh, Chelsea when they almost stole that game. Well, stole the point in that game until Alonso scored later on. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to go for a draw or an Arsenal win. If I had to decide, I'm going to go a 2-1 Arsenal win in the last couple of minutes, similar to the Chelsea performance. In the last of the three o'clocks, we've got Chelsea at home to Cardiff. Now, if there's going to be a hammering this weekend, I'd put your money on this one. Neil Warnock has failed every single time in the Premier League. Everywhere he's been, he's ended up either getting sacked or relegated, as we found out into the 2006-2007 season, where we went down on the last day, and yeah, you've heard all the story about West Ham and Tevez, so I'll not carry on with that one, but... Yeah, Cardiff will most likely go down this season. The squad's not great. They've spent nothing in comparison to what Fulham and Wolves has, uh, have. Uh, that's nothing against them. They've just The ownership's just... Uh, the money's not been there. But with a manager like Warnock, uh, they're, they're going to struggle again this season. He's the, I think he's the most decorated championship manager in history. So as far as getting teams up, he's absolutely fantastic. But keeping him there is a completely different matter. So I'm going to go for... Chelsea to win, 3 or 4-0, uh, a number of different scorers, I can't see Cardiff scoring, they seem light up front, they've signed a lad from Bristol City, Bobby Reid, who will probably be a decent signing, he reminds me a little bit of Dwight Gale, who Newcastle had, is now at West Brom, uh, whether he'll be good enough for the Premier League, we'll have to wait and see, but yeah, can't see past the Chelsea win here, I'm going for Chelsea, 3 or 4-0, and the game will be over by half time. Moving on to the half five kickoff, we've got a huge game. We've got the unbeaten, the three wins in a row, Watford against Manchester United. Oh, they're, they're not very good. They're not. They're not the Man United of old. There's so much pressure on Mourinho, and personally, I think he's dealing with it quite well. Many a manager would buckle, and many a manager would resign under such pressure. And now he's obviously not uh, not got the same. How do I say it? Not got the same. Uh, aura that he had before, the special one has now become a little bit of the paranoid one, but I think he will turn it around given time, now whether Ed Woodward will give him time, we'll have to wait and see, but um, really Man United need to be winning this game, yes Watford have won three in a row, and yes they're 
third or whatever they are in the league on goal difference. Brand Liverpool and whoever else is up there. I can't think off the top of my head. Chelsea. So, yeah, uh, it's a must-win game really for Man United. They're going to be too many points, probably nine points behind Man City if they fail to win at the weekend. So, in this game, I'm going to go for a 2-1 Man United win. I think Lukaku will score. Uh, it'd be one step too far for Watford. I think they've started fantastically well, beyond the wildest expectations, especially after losing Richarlison. The uni seems to have found a new lease of life under the new manager. He said in an interview with, I'm not sure if it was uh, BBC Five Live, something like that anyway, he hated, basically hated Walter Mazzari. Uh, football became a job for him rather than a passion, so... Yeah, he's in a new lease of life at Watford and he scored against Tottenham last time out. So, it will be a tight game. It will be a tight game anyone going there. I think Man City or Liverpool would probably struggle going there at the minute with a uh, whole feeling around Watford at the minute. But, yeah, uh, one step too far. Man United to win, 2-1. Lukaku to score. Uh, Man United took a 2 nil up. Then Watford to pull them back later on. Moving on to the Sunday games, we've first got Wolves against Burnley. Now... Wolves have been impressive. When I saw them in the Championship last season against Sheffield United, we were decent last season. We were no mug side last season. And they tore us apart at their ground. Absolutely tore us apart. It were, I said right there and then that they'd finished top 10 in the Premier League. And that might have been a little bit premature. But how they've started and the performances they've had, especially against Everton, and then the performance obviously against Man City were clear for all to see. But... I think they'll beat Burnley. Burnley have struggled. They've got the Europa League, which is obviously, they've played something ridiculous, like nine or ten games already so far. It might be even more than that. Uh, and people say, oh, football should be able to play however many times a week. And yeah, fair enough, but perhaps they should. But when you've got that many games in a row, and you know, especially when you're not used to it, and the squad size of Burnley is not the same as a Man City or a Man United or anyone of that calibre. So it's going to be a hindrance rather than, it, well, it has been a hindrance rather than a, a benefit to Burnley this season. It's been fantastic for the fans, like to go into Europe and say they've been in Europe is fantastic and a great experience. But uh, as far as the Premier League goes, they've not got off on the best foot. So I'm going to go off for a Wolves win. They are at home, I think. Let me check. Yeah, Wolves at home. So I'm going to go for a Wolves win, 2 1. Burnley have not quite got going yet. They'll be absolutely fine to Sean Dyche. I expect to finish around 10th, maybe. Not quite the level of last season, but it's going to be, as I've said, a struggle in the Europa League. So I'm going to go for Wolves to win, 2-1, tight game, but I think Wolves will have too much, especially with Neves in midfield. On that note, I don't think he'll stay there much longer. I've heard that Man City are sniffing, there's rumours around that. Not sure whether it'll be Man City, but I think one of the, the top six, supposed the top six might go for him in, uh, if it's not January, then, then the summer. And yes, it will be a big deal, but for a 21-year-old, people forget he's so young. Uh, he captained Porto, age 17, I think it were in the Champions League, so he's obviously got something special, as everyone can see when you watch him. So, yeah, I think I don't think he'll be there too much longer, so, yes, enjoying Wolves fans while he's there. In the penultimate game of the weekend, we've got Everton at home against West Ham. Now, I've been really impressed, as a lot of people have, by Everton this season. Richarlison set off like a train. He's been fantastic. And look, a completely different side to Everton under Big Sam last season. You can understand why the fans were so angry with him and uh, with the style of play and all sorts like that. They, they look a different side, a completely different side and if it wasn't for the sending off against Wolves they probably would have gotten more out of that game as well despite how well Wolves played so they could be sitting on an even better points total than they already are. So in this game I can't see passing Everton win. West Ham have been poor. They seem to rely heavily on Arnautovic. If it's not for him, if he doesn't score, he doesn't turn up and he's a bit of a, a maverick player so that's always a possibility. Then they're always going to struggle. There are definite candidates for going down this season. I don't rate Pellegrini a huge amount. Yes, he's won the Premier League, but if you look at the side he had when he won the Premier League, it's, um, well, I think anybody could have won it. I think I could have won it with that side. So, yes, I think Everton will win tomorrow, tomorrow, on Sunday. I think Everton will win comfortably. And I think the pressure will mount on West Ham and on Pellegrini and... I don't think it'll be long. One more, perhaps two more losses from here. So if they lose against Everton at the weekend and then next time out, then I think that might be the end of Pellegrini. Last up for the Monday night game, we've got Southampton at home to Brighton. Now this is not one for the uh, football purists. I think it might be better to tune in to listen to Neville and Carragher talk. They actually watched the game, but anyway. 
Uh, it's going to be a tight game. Both sides aren't great offensively. Uh, Brighton lost surprisingly on the opening day of the season. I thought they'd be up there. Not up there, but I thought they'd improve upon last season. Uh, Chris Hewitt's a fantastic manager. He'll do really well. Uh, they'll stay up 100%. And Glenn Murray, 35 years old. People are calling for an England call-up. I'm not entirely sure about that, but yeah, he's scoring goals for them. He's doing really well. So um, last time out, he scored two, I think, against West Ham. So it's gonna be a close game. I think Southampton will probably have too much for him going forward. Their attacking lineup is good now. They've got Shane Long there. Uh, I'm not a massive fan of Mark Hughes, but he'll keep them up. They'll keep afloat. Um, not quite as good as they have in previous seasons, where they've had top half finishers around 10th mid table anyway. But yeah. I'm going to go for a Southampton win, 1-0 uh, or 2-1, or maybe even 2-0, I don't know what I'm talking about, 2-0 Southampton, and yeah, that wraps up my prediction, so I hope you enjoy, I will have a, not sure what to call it, I have to think of some ideas uh, to come up after, after the games have finished this weekend, and yes, I will talk about them, and all the talking points and whatever, so I hope you enjoyed, I hope you are going to enjoy this channel. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I will catch you later.